Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesday Live. I'm Bethany Zell. I'm the program director for Healthy You at Cary Medical Center. And this is going to be our final Wellness Wednesday Live of 2020, if you can even believe it. And I know a lot of people are really excited about the fact that 2020 is coming to an end very quickly here. And we're gonna be talking about a topic today that is pertinent to the new year. Because at the stroke of midnight on December 31st, 2020 is going to be a thing of the past. And 2021 is going to be a new horizon of life that's yet unwritten. And while hundreds of thousands of people make New Year's resolutions every year, few people actually achieve them. And so one of the most important lessons that we need to learn when making our New Year's resolutions is to be sure that we're creating SMART goals for ourselves. And SMART is actually an acronym that many of you may have heard of, but we're going to talk about it right now. So when we talk about SMART, those letters stand for something and S stands for specific. Your goals need to be very well defined, clear and specific. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to focus your efforts or feel truly motivated toward achieving them. For example, you could say, I'm going to lose weight, which is very general and vague versus I'm going to lose five pounds. That is much more specific. Measurable, M is for measurable. It's important that you have a measurable goal so that you can track your progress and stay motivated. Assessing your progress helps you stay focused and meet your deadlines and continue to feel excited as you get closer to achieving your goals. For example, you could say something very broad and general, like I'm going to increase my business this year. But what does that really look like? It has to be measurable. And so you have to be more specific. You could say something like, I'm gonna take on three new clients this month and make it a little more specific. The next letter in our acronym of SMART is achievable. Do you have the capacity to achieve the goal that you're setting? Do you have resources, knowledge, time? Your goal needs to be realistic and attainable in order to be successful at it. It should stretch your ability, but it should remain in the realm of possibility. So when you set an achievable goal, you can maybe identify things that you might have overlooked, opportunities or resources that might be available that could help you bring help bring you closer to your goal. Um, so for example, if I set a goal of selling a certain number of products, but I don't have that number of products on hand, that's not an achievable goal. And so you need to be very realistic when you talk about what you can achieve. The R in our SMART acronym is relevant. Is your goal relevant to your life's purpose or your mission? It has to be consistent with the goals that you've established for yourself and fit in with whatever you currently have going on. If it doesn't fit with your immediate or long-term plans, it's going to be very difficult to maintain and be successful. And the final letter in our SMART acronym is T for time-based. Every goal needs a target date so that you have a deadline to focus on and something to work toward. This part of the SMART goal criteria helps to prevent everyday tasks from taking over the priorities that you might have for your longer term goals. So if your goals aren't SMART, you can't really determine if you're meeting or even making progress toward whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. So how does goal writing relate to New Year's resolutions? Well, of the 60% of Americans who regularly make New Year's resolutions, only 8% of them are actually successful in achieving them. That's pretty crazy, right? 8%. And I think they've even named a day of January the day that people stop with their New Year's resolutions. And more importantly than this unsuccess, the studies noted that people who make specific resolutions are actually 10 times more likely to attain their goals. And so the secret to making those New Year's resolutions and actually keeping them is to be really specific and follow this SMART template that we're talking about. And we're going to examine that a little further. But first, I want to just share with you some of the common New Year's resolutions. And this is based on a survey that happened at the beginning of this year where they surveyed almost 275,000 Americans to determine what the top 10 New Year's resolutions for 2020 were. 
And of course, we had a lot of curveballs thrown at us this year. So I'm sure that even if people were successful at getting past the, the day where people normally give up on their New Year's resolutions, I'm sure that the curveballs that came in March and further on through the year probably derailed anybody who might have been going and being successful, finding some success at these things. But this year's top 10 resolutions were actually doing the New Year's resolution because, like I said, a lot of people give up. Only 8% are getting through. Trying something new was number two. Number three was eating more of their favorite foods. Number four was one that we always think about, lose weight, diet. Number five is another one that a lot of people think a lot about when they talk about New Year's resolutions, going to the gym. Number six was to be happier to experience better mental health. Number seven was to be more healthy. Number eight, to be a better person. Number nine, to upgrade your technology. Number 10, to stay motivated. And so I just want you to take note that all of those resolutions listed the final goal, but none of them really mentioned the steps that they were going to take to achieve that goal. And while that's all well and good for reporting out you know, a list of the resolutions, it's not so great if you really want to meet your goals. So for example, number seven was be more healthy. Simply making that resolution is not enough. In order to meet a specific goal, you need to focus on the exact behavior that you want to modify in order to achieve that goal. And that's where that smart goal setting comes into play. Being healthy is far too vague. And if it's too vague, you're going to, it's going to be very easy to disregard it in the long run. The goal of being more healthy tells you nothing about the steps that you're going to need to take to do that and be successful. And so I wanna share one more acronym with you just to summarize some techniques and things that you need to consider when you are looking at writing some more specific goals and considering all the specific steps that will move you closer to your goals. Once you've created those SMART goals, you can't stop there. You need to dig deeper in order to rock those New Year's resolutions the way that we all want to when we set out on January 1st, we're all excited and gung-ho. So here's the other acronym that you can help us in that department, and that is CRUSH IT. And so we're gonna break these down real quick. C is to claim your target. That's your major goal. What is it gonna be? You know, don't try and make 18 resolutions, you know, focus on one. What's your major one? And then you need to refine it a little bit. You need to walk it out. What does that goal look like? What would it look like to you for it to be a success in your life? You need to be able to visualize yourself being successful at it. And if you can't picture yourself being successful at your resolution, it's going to be really hard to achieve it because in your heart, you might not even believe that you can do it. You, you need to understand your motivation, you know, figure out what it is that's keeping you focused on this goal. Why is it important? If it doesn't have something that's motivating you, if it doesn't have value, that's going to keep you moving toward your goal, you're going to be less inclined to keep it up long term. So you need to know why, why you want to be successful at this. And it's important that you have good motivation, that the motivation is valuable to you. Otherwise, you're not going to have any incentive for continuing on past the day when everyone else quits. S is for step it out. And this is where we talk about breaking down those big goals, as opposed to just saying, I want to lose weight. What does that look like? What are some very specific, smaller steps that you can take that will move you closer to your goal and to your success in that New Year's resolution, whatever it's going to be? You need to step it out. Make sure that you aren't taking on this big, vague concept, but rather taking on little steps that you can achieve and note your progress all along the way. H is for handling obstacles. So are there any things out there that could possibly hinder you from being successful? You need to figure out what those are in advance so that you can prepare and not be caught off guard by them. And if you're aware that something might come along and stop you from being successful, and you've already got a plan in place for what will happen when that happens, then you're gonna be that much more prepared 
to, to move through those obstacles as opposed to giving up when you face them. I is to implement your plan. And I am guilty of this one so much. I am a list maker extraordinaire and I love to make a plan, but you know, you can't just make a plan. The best laid plans only work if they're implemented. So figure out what step you can take now and actually take it. What can you do today? What can you do right now that's going to move you closer to your goal? You have to actually do it in order to be successful. And then finally, you need to treat yourself. How are you going to reward yourself along the way as you're achieving, meeting and achieving some of the baby or the littler steps, the baby steps that you might be taking to get to your final resolution success? Um, how are you going to reward yourself along the way? Make plans to do that. Make, make little goal treats for yourself. So when you reach a little level of your goal, you can reward yourself. And that can also help keep you motivated and help you really rock those New Year's resolutions. So I just wanted to leave that with you as we're closing out 2020. And I know many people are excited about that and the changes that are that are on the way for 2021. And, you know, it's a whole new year and a chance for us to start fresh and make some good choices and, and do some great things in our lives. But don't get overwhelmed with too many goals or resolutions for yourself and make it manageable. Make, it, make those goals and those resolutions smart goals so that you can be successful. So that's it for Wellness Wednesday Live for 2020. We hope you've enjoyed this series and we will be continuing it through 2021. So join us back on the second and the fourth Wednesday of every month for this great resource and time of sharing. And we'll be hearing for some, from some great providers and other community members all throughout 2021. We've got a great docket of Wellness Wednesday Live's coming up and we'll see you then. Until then, have a great Christmas and a happy new year celebration. Be safe. Please make good choices and take care of one another. Have a great year end.